Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, we are uh, just finishing up our part of the trip in Northern California. Today we're gonna drive to Southern California and we're gonna go stay with Beth for a couple days, visit some friends down there. And I also wanna make a trip to my father's grave. I have not been able to be to his grave since the day we buried him. And I got a nice little plant that we're gonna put on his grave uh, for him. Also, I know he's a huge fan of Jolly Ranchers candies, so I'm gonna leave a few Jolly Ranchers for him too. Let's go to Orange County. So that's the California aqueduct right there. That's bringing all the water that falls on Northern California down to the desert that is Los Angeles. Little mini car show here. We're quickly approaching a small town kind of into the mountains here called Gorman, California. Now, if you've ever lived in the Los Angeles area and uh, traveled anywhere north, you probably stopped in this little uh, this little roadside town. It's not really, a, there's not really a lot there. There's a few restaurants and gas stations. It's really designed to be like a, uh, a, a roadside stop just to, to get out and stretch your legs and get gas and all the stuff you need uh, but uh, it's one of those things that when you when you go to it if you've ever crossed through the area you probably stop there now a few years ago I discovered something else that was actually very very cool about this um, and it kind of gets more into my interest in geology you see one of the most famous earthquake faults in the planet is the San Andreas Fault and it turns out that Gorman is right in the middle of the San Andreas Fault. In fact, it's literally your walking distance from the actual location of the fault. But that isn't all. There's another fault, uh, another major fault in California called the Garlock Fault. And the Garlock Fault and the San Andreas Fault merge. And it turns out, right now, this little valley we're in is the Garlock Fault that we're going through. And at, at one point here, we're going to turn left and start heading towards Gorman. And that is when we, and when we enter that valley, that is the San Andreas Fault. So from a geological standpoint, this is really kind of an exciting place to be because this is a joining of two major earthquake faults in Southern California. Yep, here we are in the San Andreas Fault. All right, so this is Gorman here. Uh, basically the town's on the other side of the freeway and we're sort of at the low spot in the valley. Now, I'm not necessarily sure I'm going to be able to go out and actually find the actual fault line, but generally uh, the way it works is the fault line becomes the low spot in the valley because when you have a crack in the ground, water tends to get in there and then over the millennia, the, uh, the water kind of follows the crack down and it becomes uh, kind of the basin of the valley as the water kind of eats everything else out here. And so, theoretically, the fault itself should be at the low spot because that's where the river uh, is. So, we could literally be right here on the San Andreas Fault, literally at this spot. It's probably, you know, somewhere under this road here. And I mean, you know how much this kind of stuff uh, fascinates me. So I had to stop by and see if I see what I could see. Now, while I may not be able to find the exact fault location, what I can tell you with great certainty is that mountain there is on the North American plate. Uh, the North American plate basically starts here, 
goes all the way across North America and halfway out into the Atlantic Ocean before it hits the end of the plate. On this side of the hill, this mountain here is on the Pacific Plate. And the Pacific Plate uh, goes all the way to the ocean, which is probably another 40 or 50 miles, and then all the way across the Pacific Ocean to Japan. So these are two big, massive plates that are moving in opposite directions. And in fact, this plate here, the Pacific Plate, is moving north that way about three inches a year. It said that in uh, a few million years that uh, the city of Los Angeles will actually be a suburb of the city of San Francisco. Right now they're hundreds and hundreds of miles apart. You know, I've, uh, I've been driving for about six hours and I have essentially gone from San Francisco here to Gorman and Gorman is still a hundred miles from Los Angeles, which is that way. So, I don't know, this is our geology lesson today. I hope you learned something. So yeah, this is Gorman, California. Like I said, it's it's largely just kind of a, a truck stop town. It's got, you know, there's a few houses up here and it's all just kind of built into the hills, you know, but it's gas stations, there's a... Looks like this is a rehab center, I think. This wasn't here last time I was here. Shows how long it's been since I've been here. It's still windy though. But this is Gorman, California. Check out the water tower up there on the hill. I'm gonna stop and stand still so you can actually see it here. Now I'll admit, I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time here. I got a kind of a deadline in order to get down to the cemetery to visit my father, but I kind of figured I did want to stop in here in, uh, in Gorman and just check it out because like I said, it's the first time I've ever actually put it on film. And uh, like I said, this is a place I've been many times and it's just one of those places you go when you're traveling north from the Los Angeles area. I don't know why, except maybe it's here and that it's a, you know, it's the last thing you get within, uh, you know, for maybe 50 miles, so. Looking at this place now, it looks like this place is still under construction, so nobody living in here yet. Just shows how new it is, though. Like I said, last time I was here, it wasn't. I also wanted to see if I could stop by one of the convenience stores and find some Jolly Ranchers for my dad's grave. One of them had like Jolly Rancher chews, but that's not quite the same thing. My father liked the hard candy and I want to find some of those, so that shouldn't be a big, a big deal. You know, I ought to be able to find them in any grocery store, any Target, any Walmart in town, so we'll keep looking. I'm 40 miles from my destination and I'm already running into LA traffic. This isn't going to be fun. Oh yeah, who wouldn't want to live like this? This building here has always been something interesting. Um, at one point it was a prison. At another point they made tires here. And now it's like a fashionable outlet store. Talk about recycling. All right, so apparently I overestimated the ease at which I was gonna be able to find Jolly Ranchers. Everyone seems to have these Jolly Rancher chews, which is like a soft chewy thing. But my father liked the hard candy and I had to go to about four different locations to find this, but we are ready now. So it's been a while since I've been here and I gotta admit, I ended up having to walk in, up and down these roads for 10 or 15 minutes to find him. I knew he was in proximity to the Michelangelo David statue. And I know that when we came in with a, well, you know, the, the hearse dropped him off over there and we walked here and then went kind of went cross country into the into this area. So I knew it was in this basic area here, but I didn't remember exactly where, but I found him. I was just looking down, I was like, oh, there he is. Yeah, like I said, I was just walking along. I was like, oh, I recognize that name. This is the place right here. It's actually real nice. It's underneath this tree over here and uh, I always thought it was appropriate that my dad's name was David and he was uh, within an eye shot of uh, the Michelangelo David statue over there. But that's it. Now I got a few things for him that I brought for him. You know, we picked this up yesterday 
and I got those special hooks here to uh, anchor it in so we're gonna see what we can do about that I did cheat a little bit the hook is actually supposed to go up over the over the rim of the pot here but I was concerned that there wouldn't be enough of the stake in the ground so I actually poked a couple of holes in the side of the uh, in the side of the pot and secured them that way but that should hold everything pretty secure I'm wiggling it pretty good and let's say said if the wind comes stronger than that then maybe it deserves to take this thing away now as the time uh, to my dad's life kind of came to a close at the end he was having a lot of problems uh, swallowing things like liquids in fact they had to thicken up his liquid uh, just because if, he, if they didn't if he just drank liquid very liquidy liquid um, he would just cough uncontrollably and uh, so like I said they had to thicken up all of his stuff but he, he's always kind of loved these jo Jolly Ranchers and he complained that when he couldn't drink enough you know fluids that his his throat always got so dry so in the end uh, he was able to have these Jolly Ranchers and uh, they were able they were allowed him to kind of keep his throat you know not from being dry and yet he could enjoy them uh, without having to cough uncontrollably that's why it was sort of impor really important that I go and find the actual Jolly Ranchers so um, I'm gonna spend a little time with him we're gonna enjoy a Jolly Rancher and I'll catch up with you in a little bit all right, so I made it here to best place. Everything's good. Um, checked in with Flash. She seems to be doing fine. She's down for the night, so won't see her probably till tomorrow. Um, Beth and I went out and had some dinner at a place across the street, and you know she's still got a regular regular day job, so I'm going to lose her again tomorrow when she goes to school. So I'm going to kind of have the place to myself, and we're going to go out and find some things to do. I think I might end up hanging hanging out with her father a little bit, and he's going to kind of give me a tour around town, show me what's changed. So come back tomorrow. We'll uh, we'll see what happens then. Until then, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.